Now that we've created a database schema in which we can store user data, it's now time to take this user submitted data and actually push it up to our newly created database table. So if we look inside of our server's index.js file, you'll remember that we created a post handler with express that states whenever a post request is sent to slash API slash users to first check if the email and password sent through match the criteria we specify. If it doesn't, then we stop everything altogether and return the user with an error response. But if the data is correct, we just log out our request body as specified by this console log statement. And as a reminder, rec.body is just an object that contains all of our users submitted data. So this area after our error checking conditional is where we will write our code to actually store our users data inside of our database. So how do we actually do that? Well, a common way is to download an NPM package that allows you to write raw SQL queries and interact with your database. The code used for this method would look something like this. Some people prefer to interact with their database this way, but I found that can create large SQL statements and become pretty complex and hard to read. In addition, you need to have some sort of understanding of how to write SQL in the first place. So statements like this can be hard to pick up for people who are new to backend development. As a result, instead of using an NPM package that uses raw SQL, we're going to use SQLize's ORM functionality. An ORM is what's known as an object relational mapper. The package SQLize in itself is actually defined as an object relational mapper. So what does this actually mean? I like to think of an ORM as a library that allows you to interact with your database without having to write any raw SQL. Instead of raw SQL, you query and post data to your database using plain JavaScript. I typically find using JavaScript over raw SQL produces much cleaner files that are easier to read and pick up on at a later time. In addition, when using an ORM, if you ever want to change the database you're using down the road, such as switching from something like MySQL to Postgres, you don't need to alter any of the raw SQL that may be specific to your particular database program. You can simply specify within your ORM that you'd like to change your database type, and it'll handle all of the syntax changes for you automatically, so some really useful stuff there. There are a lot of benefits to using an ORM over SQL, but personally, my main thing is I like to use it for cleanliness purposes. So how do we add this ORM functionality using SQLize? We'll need to generate what's known as a model. A model is just a JavaScript object that represents a table in your database. So we need some sort of JavaScript object that has an ID, email, and password as its properties. We could easily write our own function that generates these objects for us, but SQLize already provides this functionality, plus it adds on query methods that I mentioned earlier, methods that allow you to push and get data to and from your database. So to create the SQLize object, we're going to open up our terminal and run the following SQLize command. npx SQLize model generate. Then we'll add dash dash name. And then for dash dash name, we're going to specify what table this JavaScript object should represent. So we'll put to user here with an uppercase U. And then we need to specify what attributes this model should have. And attributes are basically a representation of what columns we have inside of the database table we're referencing. So what data from our table do we really need? We need our users' emails, which will specify our strings. And we'll also need our users' password, which will also specify should only be strings. Note, we're separating these attributes with commas. There shouldn't be any spaces here or else this command won't work. So once you enter everything, Let's run this. And two things will happen here. One, if we look inside of our models directory, we'll see a new file called user.js. This is our model file, the file that defines what a user should look like in JavaScript object format. Here we're telling SQLize to generate an object that has an email and a password specifying that both properties will always be strings. With this function here, we can also do things such as define associations between other models we create, but for now, this is all we really need to get started. The generated file already exports this object for us, so all we need to do is import it into the file we want to use it in. The other thing the model generate command did was create a new migration for us automatically. If we look inside here, it's essentially the same migration file we created in the last episode, but it includes two more fields created at and updated at. 
When storing any data to a database, it is incredibly useful to know when this data was created and when it was updated last, so SQLite makes sure that these fields are included for us automatically when generating models. Now, since we basically have a duplicate migration, we'll want to roll back the user's migration we ran in the last episode to clear our database. So we'll run npx sqlize db migrate undo. And now that our database is clean, we can delete our initial migration and use the new one that was generated for us that also contains the created at and updated at fields. So let's delete the old migration and then run the new one. And now when you refresh your database, we have a users table, which consists of five columns compared to the three that we had previously. Now let's push our user submitted data into this table using that SQLized model we just generated. Inside of index.js, we're going to import our model, but instead of importing the model directly, we're going to import the index.js file that's inside of our models directory instead. This index.js file automatically reads any other files within the models directory and stores them inside of one large JavaScript object. This is solely for code cleanliness purposes. As your project progresses, you're going to be creating more and more models inside of this models directory. If you were to import each model individually, well, you'd start to create a long chain of import statements that end up cluttering your file. By only importing index.js, we're technically importing all of our models, but only with one line of code. And this is something that we can easily reference in return. So by importing index.js, we only have to import one line of code rather than many. And now that this is imported, inside of our app post method, we can say when there are no errors associated with our data, we want to reference our models object, which contains a user model as specified here within our models directory. And we want to reference our models create function, something that SQLize provides for us. And this create function takes an object with the properties specified within our model file. And these properties are email and password. Rather than setting these equal to empty strings, we want to make sure that we are creating a new user with the actual data our user submitted from our registration form. And we can reference that with our rec.body object. So we'll set email equal to rec.body.email. And then we'll set our password equal to rec.body.password. Now, if we save this and look at our app's terminal process, you'll notice we have an error related to not being able to find a module, specifically config.json. Although this sounds familiar to something we fixed previously, it actually has to do with the fact that we're importing index.js from our models directory, which contains code that needs to be updated based on the configuration changes we made in a previous episode. And rather than requiring config.json, we'll want to require config.js instead because that's what we're using as our configuration file so that we can import .env variables inside of it. Remember, we can't import these variables within a JSON file, so it needs to be this JS one instead. So now if we save index.js within our models directory, our errors go away, which is perfect. So let's head on over to our browser and submit some data from our front end, which remember needs to be within the backend validation criteria we specified. You won't notice anything immediately, but if you refresh your user's table in your database, you should see user input being stored. So this is successful for the most part, but there are a few things to take into consideration here. First, we're storing our password in plain text, which is a huge no-no when developing apps. Storing passwords in plain text will land you in huge legal trouble if your database were to ever be compromised, so it's important that you make sure that this password is hidden to the visible eye. And this is done through what's known as password hashing. Secondly, we need some sort of way to tell whether or not our model's creation method was successful. We don't have any error catching within this create function. So we need some sort of way to track that. So to learn how to hash your passwords and catch any errors that might be associated with your SQL code, tune in the next video right now.